Well, good morning, my friends. Today we depart. Today we leave Budapest and we head back to Los Angeles and I'm leaving so early I didn't want to give you nothing. So what you're watching today, I filmed yesterday. Hope you enjoy it. Then we're gonna catch a flight to Berlin, change over, and end up in Los Angeles. Back to the home of Ja. Days with Jordan the Lion begins kinda right now. Look at this beautiful place. Statues everywhere. Those kids up there playing the violin. Oh, this is awesome, look at this. Sir Jord Solti. This is great. It's a music monument, obviously. He must have been a well-known composer or something here. I don't know my classical. Well, today, what we're gonna do is we're going to the childhood and still family-owned home of <laughs> a woman who wasn't quite an actress, she wasn't quite a dancer, a singer, any of that stuff, but she got her start doing that, and then people found out that she was just so funny, she became a fixture as a personality. She was on TV shows, she was on Batman, Gilligan's Island, tons of talk shows, and eventually became famous, well, for her behavior of slapping a cop in Los Angeles. Now I'm talking about one lady, but she actually had two other sisters, and one of them was also extremely famous. Although, not really famous here in Hungary, even though this is where she's from, because she was on Green Acres, which was a hit show. But Green Acres, when I guess Hungary tried to buy the rights to show it here, they wanted too much money, so it was never shown here at that time. We're going to the house of Magda, Ava, and Zsa, Zsa Gabor. And look where we're walking past. Now what's kind of cool is I was having trouble finding the address for this. A lot of people had requested that I go here, but I just, I had looked and I really couldn't find the address. And uh, what ended up happening was, I ended up finding a, like a travel blog. And I read through it and somehow, I completely missed that the address was in there. So somebody else sent it to me. And what was interesting about that travel blog is the person said that they were traveling through Europe and that they contacted Zsa, Zsa Gabor's office in Los Angeles and asked if they could come by to look at her house. And they not only said yes, they said, we will put you in touch with Zsa, Zsa's cousin and he'll give you a personal tour. I didn't have enough time to contact that guy or find him or anything, but I thought that was a great story. And we're also going to make an attempt, since it's only a block away, to see Hero Square again without all the hoopla, literally. Basketball hoopla. That's a little shoe. Painter's welcome. Well, we're pretty close. I think we're only a block away. This is right next door to her house. Her neighbor's house, damn near looks like the Adams family lives here. Well, gang, here it is. This is the Gabor house. Now what's interesting about their family is that her father was a soldier, her mother actually was an heiress to a jewelry fortune. And that's where they got all their money, so 
Zsa Zsa was actually quoted as saying that they had four servants living here and that she or her mother never ever had went into the kitchen. In fact, she would later say in her life, I didn't go in the kitchen when I was a kid, why would I go in there as an adult? She always had really great like witty sayings, but she was born in 1917 and lived in this house. And then in her early teens, she went off to boarding school, was eventually found as a singer, was asked to sing for a famous composer, and this was her house. Now when she eventually went to the United States with her mother, she, um, because her parents had actually divorced, um, Ava was already there with her husband, and Zsa Zsa went and would go on to marry nine different men. Well, she said she had eight husbands and nine marriages. I don't, I don't, I mean, that's hilarious, but her second one was actually to Conrad Hilton, and she had one daughter who I quasi knew. She used to come to the comedy store all the time. Her name was Francesca. But Zsa Zsa was married numerous times, had numerous affairs. She was linked to Sean Connery, Frank Sinatra. I mean, you name it, she was linked to him. And what a fantastic career she had. Like I said, she was just, people would hire her constantly for TV shows and things like that because she was really good off the cuff and very witty. You know, what a great lineage. I wish they had something to her. But like I said, I thought that was pretty cool that when um, the people contacted her, her office, they said, not only can you go by the house and we'll tell you where it is, but you can meet our, our Zsa Zsa's cousin, uh, Yosef, who is a uh, actually in film production or television production here. Now, what's kind of sad or what's kind of interesting, I guess, is that Zsa, Zsa always wanted to return here and in fact she wanted to take a trip here in her later years but her daughter didn't want her to because her daughter was afraid with her health and everything that Zsa, Zsa wouldn't come back. She would just decide to stay over here and even though I know it says online that she was buried in Westwood Memorial Cemetery, what else I read online was that her request was that she wanted her ashes to be brought to Budapest. So as far as I know, her ashes are actually in Budapest. And I don't know exactly where the, if this was all her house because there's a business off here to the side down there and then one off to the side down here as well. But she said this was a massive house and it was a, like I said, the family had a great fortune. So there you go friends. Those of you who wanted to see Zsa Zsa Gabor's house in Budapest, this is it. This nice lady just invited me in. She said the house is 150 years old. So nice. Wow. It looks like it's more of an apartment building now. I don't know, let's just take a, take a gander. Thought that was co so cool, the lady actually saw me and uh, standing outside and I said, this was Zsa Zsa Gabor's house. She said, oh, I don't know. I said, no, I looked it up, it is. Isn't that something? Her courtyard. It looks like for the most part, this is all now separate. All right, I don't assume anybody's gonna invite me into their house or in, into their place of living, so this was it. Interesting. I don't know, maybe the family has sold it now? I don't know. Well, the lady who let me in definitely didn't follow that rule. <laughs> Very nice of her though. I'm glad you guys got to see at least where Zsa Zsa, Ava, and Magda, and their mom Jolie, and where they all would have entered this house right here. And if you doubt it, there's the address, 97 Andrasi. I wonder if it's possible, see there's the address and everything, I wonder if it's possible that after her death and after they, they all died, maybe the family sold this building. I don't know. The Gabor front steps. Well, I'll tell you, that's what's great about being a vlogger, man. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Getting to document stuff like that when people go out of their way for you. I had mentioned on uh, the Facebook page last night that 
I was gonna go up and knock on that door because <laughs> it's like 9 30 a.m. right now I was gonna go knock on that door and uh, see if they'd let me in or give me a tour or anything and it certainly looks like they've converted it now to apartments or businesses a little bit of both but as I'm walking up and down the street I can definitely tell these that was all one house that has now been kind of divided up it was just tons of rooms and everything and uh, I had said when I got there I was gonna knock on that door and see if somebody let me in and then I didn't even have to somebody was actually coming out saw me and let me in invited me in in fact asked if I wanted to come in now look at this beautiful place that's one of her neighbors houses <clears throat> Oh wow, look at that place. That's a beauty also. Oh, I think it's the Korean consulate here. And this is the Bulgarian embassy. One of the sad things that I read about Zsa Zsa Gabor was they said that when Elizabeth Taylor died, she fell into, Zsa Zsa fell into a deep depression and actually said, well, that's it, I'm next. And actually when she died, she was a duchess. Her last husband, considerably younger than her, Prince Frederick von Anhalt, Duke of Saxon, he's a weirdo himself. I'm, out of all the weird people I've ever read about in my life, this guy, <laughs> this guy paid a dying duchess to adopt him when he was an adult so that he could have that title. So he technically and legitimately was the Duke he paid a friend or someone that he knew that knew Zsa Zsa $5,000 to introduce him to Zsa Zsa and then he very shortly after there proposed and it sounds like throughout their life they bickered and argued constantly but Zsa Zsa was quoted as saying how, how great this is to have one of the oldest titles in all of Europe so she they said that she had been so used to being rich and wealthy her whole life that every time she would get hooked up with a man he was always very wealthy very successful or had some sort of title even her first husband was a uh, politician here in Budapest and this is the Turkish Embassy like I said in the vlog yesterday I believe it was that Turkey ruled Hungary for 150 years well, we made it back to Hero Square, and it looks like dang near every tourist group in the city is here. Let's go take a look. Now, like I mentioned the other day, during the Austro-Hungarian Empire, all of these statues were actually Austrian heroes that they put here. And once that was all brought down and Hungary became what it is now, they replaced it with all Hungarian noblemen including Imer Negi, who they did a reburial for him here a few years back. And he was the one, of course, we've seen his statue, we heard about him at the House of Terror, and he was the Prime Minister of Hungary at one point before he was executed in 1958. Now we can take a look at all of them. I'm trying to fight the sun glares, friends. Just for you. And this one right here is actually King Bela the Fourth, or King Bela the Fourth, whom we talked about the other day. And then, of course, Saint Stephen. is friends if you look way up there in the top the winged angel is holding a scepter and the king's crown 
Now we're out of here. Let's go to the airport and head back home. And just before we head to the airport, I was walking by this Holocaust Memorial. And I thought it was at least worth putting on here. I figure that's the absolute least I can do. It says this wall serves as a memorial to the rich, vibrant Jewish life that once flourished on these streets. Since the middle of the 19th century, this neighborhood has been the center of the Jewish life in Budapest. Home to numerous schools, synagogues, communal facilities, and stores. This wall, however, also reminds us of what occurred on these very same streets in the dark days of the Holocaust from December 2nd, 1944 until January 18th, 1945. This neighborhood was the location of the Budapest ghetto where 70,000 Jews were crowded into a squared, 0.3 squared mile into 4,513 apartments with an average of 14 people in each room. They lived in constant fear of both the Hungarian Arrow Cross henchmen and the Nazis. During these six weeks, more than 10,000 lives were lost here. Well, there's my bus to the airport, guys. All right, gang, well, we're at the airport, and I know I said I was flying to Berlin. I was wrong. I knew I wasn't flying to the same place in Germany. Uh, the first time I was coming through, I stopped in Munich, and this time I'm actually going to Frankfurt, so I'll be in Frankfurt for just like a short time. Then I get to fly home, and I, uh, when we get sat down, I'm gonna show you guys a few things I'm bringing back with me. I got pretty lucky not going back through Munich because when I was, in the check-in line, everybody there, I mean the line was massive, was there because there were three flights going to Munich and all the flights to Munich today were canceled for some reason and nobody seems to really know why. So last night as I was thinking about how I was going to depart today, I was, uh, I was texting back and forth with the girl that I'm seeing back in the United States and I said, hey, is there anything you want me to bring you back? And she said, just maybe some chocolate if there's anything that we can't get here. So. I ran the gamut and I went to a chocolate store and I just said, what's your best chocolate? And he said, Stumer. So I got that one. And then Kinder is like a classic here everywhere. And then she had mentioned that she wanted us to go on a picnic. So I stopped and bought um, this uh, Hungarian sausage. And then this one is actually a gift from a pal, Adam the Woo. I thought maybe he would, uh, he would enjoy trying out some... Uh, Hungarian sausage and my friend Kevin who's watching jaw. He's a vegetarian. Well, he's vegan So he can't eat any of this stuff anyway now. We play the waiting game We just sit and wait Then we fly an hour to Frankfurt We'll hang out there for less than an hour and then we are back on our way to As Sam Elliott said in the Big Lebowski Los Angeles City of Angels. Didn't find it to be that quite exactly. So if you're in the Budapest airport, they have a Hard Rock Cafe store in here that's kind of worth checking out because they have a, an autographed Aerosmith guitar, well, bass, and a few other things. Chunga's Revenge, Frank Zappa. Now this is pretty cool. This is Chris Isaac's guitar and they said that he even did all the drawings on there, if you can see. Well, getting to come to Budapest was not only a great decision, but a total blessing. I'm extremely happy that I got to come here, and I'll tell you this. If you ask me what my favorite thing that I did here was, I honestly, I couldn't even pick what my favorite thing was per day. I mean, definitely just all the history, all the architecture and everything, but the very pleasant surprises that I really didn't think I would enjoy as much as I did was like the house of Houdini because the guy who ran it's an illusionist and he when he realized what I did he was really uh, um, really into letting me show a little bit and tell a little bit and uh, that just that's just kind of what makes vlogging fun every single day you, you may think that you're walking out and you know exactly what you're gonna do and you get presented with all kinds of surprises along the way and even all the way here in Budapest they have a picture of the comedy store look at that well, we're almost entering the plane. Goodbye, Budapest.
Well, we made it to Frankfurt all in one piece. Would you like to take a wild guess, Lionheart? Who got randomly selected for additional screening once I got off the plane at immigration? Oh yeah. They loved me. Yeah! This is all in the airport. That's one big beer. Well, that was one heck of a way to be welcomed into Frankfurt. And then the second heck of a way to be welcomed into Frankfurt is to say hi to Statue of Einstein. Hello, my friend. So the additional screening process actually wasn't too bad. The guy that took, there was about six of us they chose. The guy that took us upstairs for that screening, he said, you'll probably be through all that before all the other people are. It's actually a little bit faster. And I was like, what, really? So he takes us up and uh, basically, they, they said they wanted to search our bags, but they didn't. All they wanted to see was your laptop and your wallet. And I didn't have a laptop. Then they took a little swab, ran it across my belt, had me take my shoes off, and I said, dude, you're gonna regret that because those shoes stink like high heaven, and he started laughing. <laughs> so, I was, I mean, from the time they sent me up there and the time I was done, it was probably, I don't know, a minute and a half. They were more interested as to what the little leveler that I have on my camera is to make sure my shots are level. They've never seen one of those before, if you can believe that. You can always have Oktoberfest here. Well, unfortunately, this is about all we're gonna see out of Frankfurt, Germany. Could be worse. I kinda like these little uh, puppet thingies. Those are kinda fun. That one kinda looks like Bozo. Yeah, I think we may have to get one. Look at this. I'm just not sure which one to get. I like them all, actually, or a bunch of them. This one looks like George Washington. They have all kinds, there's police, there's guards. I think this might be fun to screw with Jaw. Get it right up there by Jaw and then go, Wah! I'm either thinking this guy or this clown. I'm extremely amazed at what kind of great stuff they have in the airport gift shop. If you wanna buy anything from Germany, look at all the meats and they have sausages and stuff inside the refrigerator up here, all kinds of stuff. We are through customs at LAX, just picking up my bags. Ready to go home. We're back! We're back! Yes! All right, Lionhearts, we are back in Hollywood. Just got off the bus, right in front of my old Trader Joe's, my old stomping grounds, and Budapest was a blast. Now we gotta figure out if my car is in good enough shape to go get jaw today or if I'll have to figure out something tomorrow. I'm hoping to see my little buddy today, so thanks for doing this uh, big trip with me, guys. I, I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Now let's get to my house. Well, that's it, Pumas. We say goodbye. It's been a nice run. I've had you for two years. You've been to Sweden. You've been everywhere with me, and now we call it quits. 
However, I am going to steal your laces because I ordered a new pair of Pumas that I'm calling the Moon Shoes, and I think they'll look pretty cool with your laces. Peace out, brother. Well, Gable, I'm back. I just got my shower, I've washed all the vacation, all the airplane off me, and uh, now we're going to roll over to Kevin's and we're going to pick up the my little roommate. My little 12 pound licking roommate. The Joster. Who all is excited to see Jaw? This guy. Well, unfortunately, I tried to go get Jaw, and uh, geez. My car made it about two miles, and as I was going up a slight uphill, it just quit accelerating, so I turn around, babied it all the way home. Now I'm gonna have to lift up to the valley and lift back. But I gotta get him, so what can I do? All right, we're here. This should be funny because he has no idea I'm coming. Kevin left the door unlocked. I'm just gonna walk on in. I know that guy! Hi! 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 Did you miss me? You did? Thank you. I missed you too. Let me see your tail wag. Where's that wagon tail? Look at that waggy tail. You're gonna fight? You're gonna fight? You're gonna fight? You're gonna fight? Well, it feels nice to be back. I will miss Budapest, guys, but it's nice to be back and hanging out with Jaw and uh, having a date this weekend. And it's going to be nice to adjust back into Los Angeles. So I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog now. Um, a couple of things. I wanted to say that um, Patreons, send your questions in. I'm going to do our uh, monthly Q&A in the next day or so, maybe a couple of days. Um, tomorrow I'm having the mechanic come and get my car looked at, so that should be a real exciting day. And uh, let's see what else. Um, oh yeah, I brought back some kind of random stuff from Budapest and uh, all the Patreons and people that are on there. I'm going to randomly just send a few of you some of the stuff that I brought back. So if I send you an email or I send you a message asking for your mailing address, that's why. Um, it'll just be random, just no real rhyme or reason to it. I'll probably literally just open up the list, put my finger down, and that's how I'll do it. So thank you guys for going on this trip with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, until our next one, hopefully there will be a next one. Good night. From Hollywood, California. <laughs>